single and same sex couples experience the same concerns as heterosexual couples but there are also some unique factors involved. For instance with single women um, they might be managing a whole range of feelings, feeling daunted, feeling empowered, feeling nervous, feeling excited but they're managing them on their own. Um, as a single woman therefore it's really important to identify who your support pe people are so someone that can go with you through decision making, maybe treatment and into the future um, and someone who doesn't judge you as you go along. If you're successful in starting a family as a single woman in particular it's, you might find that time, um, you're going to have a shortage of time and if you go ahead and have a child then um, planning time out to look after yourself is really important so if you can get into the habit or practice of asking for help now that can be really useful. Um, I think though however um, in saying all of that be prepared for taking sole responsibility for your decisions now and into the future. There are often mixed feelings involved as you go through um, the treatment and, and you, when you're in a partnership Sometimes you're feeling one way and your partner's not feeling that way too and there, you know there's a difference there. And I think the thing is is keep communicating about how you're feeling so keep the channels open and accept that maybe they're not into or up to the same place as you. Our journey started off um, really exciting, yeah. um, high spirits and um, just searching for a lot of information really. Um, and then obviously there were hurdles that needed to be overcome um, and we just tried to stay really positive and, and strong throughout the journey I think. And so it came as a real surprise for us that um, we did face some difficulties, particularly being two women, we thought you know we, we wouldn't have that issue at all. Um, and so yeah it's, it's a tough journey you know there's the um, every month trying to pick yourself up and, and get into a, a hopeful and, and positive frame of mind. It can also be really surprising or shocking to find out that um, getting pregnant's not as easy as you thought so sometimes there's a single person or two women in a same-sex relationship they haven't had any reason to believe that there's going to be a fertility problem and so as you go through um, the treatment and it's taking longer or it's not working that can be quite hard and quite difficult so um, to have partner support is really good and as a single person it's good to have that calm anchored person who can help you through the ups and downs of hopes and disappointment. It is and, and you're used to being able to you know set goals and work towards them and do whatever you need to to, um, to achieve those goals and then suddenly you realise it's, it's largely out of your control and there's a, a large amount of luck involved in it and so it's a, um, yeah, it's a hard process. Yeah, I think it's just about being prepared to be unprepared. Yeah. <laughs> Throw out the five year plan. <laughs> and, and eventually we got there and, you know, it was worth it. You know, every minute was absolutely worth it to have fun and, um, and you know, we're, we're just such a strong family unit now. So in terms of options for trying to get pregnant, for single women it includes uh, sperm donation or maybe sperm donation in combination with egg donation and that's pretty much the same as it is for women who are in same sex relationship. You can have a choice between having a personal donor, someone who's known to you or maybe a clinic recruited donor. But I would say when you're thinking about it quite early on go and contact the clinic that you think you might be using to see um, how many donors there are or how they can help you recruit because there can be long wait lists and a shortage of donors. If you are thinking that you're going to be requiring egg donation in combination with donated sperm then that is a bit more of a complicated process. Um, you need two donors um, and, but you also need to work with a clinic to do a application to an ethics approval to actually do this. That's what the law says in New Zealand. So the clinic will help you do it, um, but it can take extra time, it takes extra money, you'll probably be having to pay for treatment as well, so it requires some perseverance. So we approached um, the two main clinics in Auckland and, and put our names down on the waiting list for a donor, uh, and then 
when that came up, we were lucky enough to find a wonderful donor, um, and we started the process with donor insemination. Um, and uh, it's a challenging process, that's for sure. You know, there's um, all the hope and the, the positivity, and then um, and then there's the waiting and the trying to block it and just trying to get on with life. And and then you know there's sort of um, you know waiting for that phone call and having to test and stuff. So. It's a, it's a long and hard process um, and it's a process that's got lots of ups and downs because each month you're trying to lift yourself back up and, and get back into that positive, um, sort of peaceful state, ready for it. All donors need to go through counselling and their partners, if they've got them, go through an implications counselling as well. And also as a recipient, either as a single recipient woman or a um, same-sex couple, then um, you'll have counselling too. And if you know each other, you'll probably have a joint session together where you get down and talk about you know, roles and expectations and that kind of thing. The law protects a child's right to know who their donor is. So a donor-conceived child can find out at the age of 18 um, who their donor is, if that's a clinic recruited donor. Obviously, if you've used a do donor known to you and that person's involved in um, your child's life, then there's much more options about having information and contact. The, the clinic staff were just fantastic, you know, our family and friends who we shared um, obviously what we're doing with them, they were amazing and I think that that support was really critical. It's been absolutely life changing to have Finn in our lives and it just feels like a, um, the ultimate privilege to be able to share a journey with him. But amazing I'd do it all again in a flash um, and, and hopefully we can have a brother or sister with him sometime in the future too. Keep going. <laughs> it's just been a, um, a journey that we've learnt lots about ourselves. You know, we've got closer, as, become closer as a couple mm. and, um, and we just feel so lucky now to, to have been and to, you know, have been able to have a family. So there's plenty of options um, for you and uh, you're certainly not alone in your desire to have a family. In our communities there are lots of families who are made up in the kind of way that you picture your family to be.